Okay, starting this uh, continuation on the Bent 69 series with Old Shop Dog. Uh, they couldn't come up. They had to go to Illinois today. So, unfortunately, they didn't get to come up, which is a shame because the pizza trim that they had fixed, that finishing touch, looks amazing. So, the only thing I've done on the Bent 69 is pop off the negative battery cable. It's been too busy this week. I haven't had a chance to, to do anything. We had a Kia in here yesterday, and, you know, daily drivers are still a thing. So, I think a big part of what I'd like to get done today is clear off a shelf for s storing anything that comes off the car to get it out of my way although I will also use the trunk for a few things so I'll probably clean off a giant chunk of that shelf right there um, get the air cleaner pulled you know, just start pulling things that I know are in the way I'll probably just get the battery pulled and go put it over on the shelf with the batteries um, and just start assessing you know, I have a pretty tight budget and I would like to really make sure I'm going to maximize the impact and get the most done for him that I can with his budget. Uh, one of the non-negotiables is the new Dakota Dash. The other absolute non-negotiable is the wiring. The wiring has to be done. But those are two fixed costs. I already know what they're going to be and I know what they entail. But as far as the other places to be spending money right now, that's the thing we've got to sort out. Um, so I'll kick it on here and there. And we will continue down the Bent 69 series. I'm definitely looking at this and I bet I'm going to have to order a dash kit. You know, the little clips and the little pins that go on them. It's like 13 bucks or something, but... I got an odd suspicion that he's missing some things. Also, whatever's going on there, we can fix that. We, we can do something better than that. So, we'll we'll get all that sorted out. Don't know. Oh, that's for, for his dog, for BB. Um, all right. So, we'll probably get these windows down. Like I said, I'll clean that up. Maybe I'll move those Impala seats somewhere. Although, eh, I might not. They're pretty heavy. And we'll make some space to store some of his things. Uh, there's a few things I want to know as we're pulling down. And it may seem strange, but I may actually pull the carb and all of that out of the way as well. Because I would like to make part of the budget uh, fixing that dented oil pan and finding out what's going on there. Plus, there are a few uh, pretty decent leaks and generally it's only time and not money to fix seals and leaks and time i'm already donating so you know if, if there's a few things we can fix there that would help and then i do know he mentioned that the front brakes were were getting a little thin getting a little worn so i'll we'll have to pull all that off at some point and evaluate that Unfortunately, you know, it's all SSBC stuff, which means, you know, you got to order their stuff. So that'll blow a little chunk out of the budget. Not a lot I can do with that. But getting rid of all of this, cleaning this up, um, may be able to come up with something a little nicer on the, on the cooling system as well. You know, we'll, we'll see what we can do there. Uh, I know this, it, it works okay. You know, he wasn't complaining about overheating, but that is just a, a nightmare waiting to happen there. So, I wish fuel injection was going to be part of this stage, but it just isn't. We, the budget's not going to get us there. So, we will get it working correctly uh, with what we've got now. Um, that's actually one of my billet dizzies, and it's probably just going to stay in it. But the CD box he's got is one of these cheap Summit ones, you know. And I think that's part of his ignition problems. I think that keeps skipping. But then look at the wiring, you know. So I do, I think I have a 6AL in a box somewhere that I'm probably never going to use. So I think we'll donate that to the project. And then the entire ignition system will be unknown. Um, you know, 
that Mallory coil will be fine. It's it's not my personal choice, but it works. So let's not monkey with things that work. Uh, and in in all of this, I'm definitely going to pull some valve covers, kind of check things out, see see what's going on. For starters, this engine draws no vacuum. You know, you've seen in other videos, it draws very little vacuum, which is quite surprising. You know, which means I'm sure we're talking the 106 LSA and, you know, large rumpity rump cam because I wanted the sound. But I really want to evaluate whether that makes sense or not. You know, replacing that noisy vacuum pump that you can almost see back there. Because that thing is a nightmare. That's got to go. You know, does it make sense to replace that? Or does it make more sense to... Uh, just pop the cam over to something with a wider angle still get that rumpy angry sound that he wants but maybe maybe make the car a little more drivable we'll see that eh, that might just be on my wish list um shifter definitely needs rebuilt no matter what happens the shifter is getting rebuilt and the uh transmission definitely leaks and i'm worried about first gear you know maybe the uh one two shift fork is uh not so happy so we will we will take and pull that down that's all going to come out anyway so when it's out it's not that hard to inspect the four speed and we'll figure out which one he's got i don't actually know which muncie is in there um so we're gonna have to get all that sorted out but yeah so this is the start of a project that will go over the course of this winter you know in tandem with the Pontiac and then in the next few weeks the Henry J will actually be sitting right here and part of why the canaries are back there was so that I can measure out my distance because the Henry is 14 feet and like four four and a half inches so I just want to make sure I can walk around the car completely and still have plenty of room up here as far as how I'm going to store the tractors uh, the neighbor and I do prefer uh, keeping them in the warm and away from the mice and the squirrels so it is kind of nice to to keep the tractors in here um, that's probably not storing in here this winter or if it is it'll be under here somewhere because i've still got to go through all of this you know this is all just stuff that came down from the other shop up at the house and i just haven't sorted it all out yet you know like there's a really nice rear seat for the Suburban I'll never ever use. So, I don't know. We'll uh, get a little work done. Shop Dog's already bored. He's taking a nap. But I'll get a little bit done and I'll kick the camera back on. But yeah, the Bent 69 project's definitely getting started. Well, we're making progress on the cleanup. Nothing on the car yet. But I'm starting to get some space to put his stuff here. So I'm just putting, moving stuff out of my way. Not really going to too much detail here. Just kind of pulling things out. Like that shifter actually goes with that console up there. Because I do have 68Z03 swap. You know, I've got the bucket seats and the console and the horseshoe shifter for a 68B body with a Z03. Uh, which is the bucket seats and the console. Um... Originally, it was going to go in the Impala, but after driving that giant couch, nope, love that bench seat. So, don't know what I'm going to do with that yet, but I'll hang on to it. So, see, I'm just trying to create some space to put some stuff. I know that's all household stuff I got to go through at some point. And then, I don't know about the rest of the world, but I save the boxes for things in case I ever have to move them or sell them or send them back. You know, there's TV boxes and stuff. And in fact, the reason we say that, I'm going to need the feet off of this one soon because we're swapping some TVs around because movies are canceled. So we've decided we're going to get a big TV downstairs for when Wonder Woman comes out and, you know, probably uh, Black Widow. Everything, I think everything's going to be on streaming soon. So might as well just invest in it. So Shop Dog doesn't care. The only part he likes about movies is when we get to have popcorn. Went ahead and picked her up. Just kind of take a look underneath. See what's what down here. Haven't been under here in a little while. 
you know, things like that. And then, you know, what do you do? You got to work with what previous people have done. Looks like our exhaust is holding up okay physically. Might be a little tight right there. We're probably going to want to rotate that a little bit. But we can do that. Looks like it's doing pretty good over here. Obviously, all of this is coming out. This is all just a giant mess. This is going to come out because I don't think it actually works. Uh, let's look at our wiring here. I don't know where that actually goes. But all the wiring in this car is coming out. Uh, yeah, we'll change the seals while that's out. This is the TCC switch and it's wet, so that's not good. So we'll take care of plugging that up. Yeah, that whole shifter is gonna wind up getting cleaned up. Um, I am happy to see this is actually somewhat dry. I know he hasn't driven it much, but you can see it's wet up here and it wasn't when the last time this car left because you can see right up there, that front seal is not sealed. So all of that's got to come out. Oh, that's so not fun. I think I'll just, well, I got to drain the coolant anyway to uh, do sensors for the dash. So I think that's going to be when we just pop the whole radiator out, give ourselves some room. We'll pull the whole front off because I'm going to have to pull the damper. I'm going to have to reseal the timing cover because the front seal isn't sealed. So all of that has to come off anyway. So, you know, what do you do? Not real happy with where they ran the fuel line here, but you know, I didn't do it. <laughs> Would not have been my first choice, but obviously they had to do a repair here. Uh, you know, and we all know how fun it is to get around that dog leg. So, since we're not doing fuel injection on this go, because the budget's not gonna be there, we just want to get all of this working good. We're going to have to clean all of this at some point. Because how can you tell what's leaking if you don't clean the old? It, uh, it's awful wet in here, which leads me to believe that I'm going to be checking the level in this rear end as well. I have a feeling she's slinging. It doesn't appear, well, yeah. If it's the pinion, it's slow. So, well, we've got all winter. We can putts and putts and putts. It's one thing I'll have plenty of projects this winter um, you can see this is leaking so that's but that's all coming out anyway uh, while the tranny's out you know we'll pull the flywheel and look at the rear main we're really gonna think about maybe popping the oil pan which isn't fun in these cars you know this cross member sits real close and you got to get the the weights set just right on the crankshaft you gotta take this leaf out of here. Um, and maybe whatever this is, another big leaf. Get that out of there. So there's plenty to do. There's a lot of things to do that are more time than budget. All this resealing is definitely on that list. So we'll look at all of that. Not digging. See, this is one of those universal gaskets that's meant for uh a uh, passenger side dipstick. I'm sure they probably put some sealant in there to keep it from leaking, but uh, not actually the correct gasket for this block because this is a driver side dipstick block. You can see over here. So, like I said, I think it's one of those universals. But uh, if we do drop that, we will put. I've got a different gasket I prefer, so we'll do that. And then we'll really look at this. This, uh, we may be able to pound that out and make me feel better. On the upside, I know whatever happened here missed the pickup because we have oil pressure. <laughs> so, pretty sure of that. Um, like I said, all this wiring is coming out. While this is out, we're also going to uh, be checking out the clutch because... You know, we, we definitely have some engagement issues, so we will look into that. Um, yeah, overall, it's not a bad car. I'm not complaining about the car in any way. It's a fun, good driver. Nothing crazy going on. It just it needs a little bit of love. It definitely needs some love, and it needs somebody who's not getting paid by the hour. 
on a budget because that's where so many shortcuts happen. When you're in a shop, he can't invest a ton of time. He's got to pay his guy. So you're going to get shortcuts. Anything you can do yourself or with your buddies is always going to be a little more attention to detail. However, you don't always have the same tools a shop does. So, you know, you balance that out. I hope we can find the build sheet for this motor at some point. I would like to know more about the cam that's in it. Um, a lot of complications arise from that thing that just seems silly for a street car. Hard to live by. And then I know he wants to replace this. And boy, he's not wrong. It is pretty beat. It looks like it's ripped everything out. I'm sure he's hit the sit parking a few times. You know, what do you do? These cars sit a little low and then you lower it two inches and now it's really bad. So we'll get there. But yeah, still just cleaning up, coming up with spots to put things. Everything I can find out now will help him make decisions later. Just want to want to make sure when this leaves in the spring that uh, it's a much better car than it is now and that he's happy with it. And that's all Shop Dog wants too, is a car that everybody's happy with. Okay, I uh, obviously stored the hood, but I've been kind of spraying her down. I got a pan down there catching, but I just keep spraying down and I'm probably going to be doing it for <laughs> a while. But just keep spraying some gunk in here. Let anything that wants to come off, come off. Um, it's going to be filthy working on this car. You can see even back on the firewall, it's, it's pretty bad. Honestly, if this was, if it wasn't winter in Minnesota, and if this was, you know, my project for me, I think I'd yank the motor and pressure wash the engine bay, but I don't think that's the direction he wants to go. I think he just wants this thing to work nice and be safe. So, yeah, you got to resist the got to resist mission creep or you wind up with the Pontiac over here. That's what happens when mission creep gets in. You start uh, you start looking at two more things and two more things. And the next thing you know, you're making your own window fuzzies. I know it's up at the house. Uh, and I will bring it down uh, sometime today or tomorrow. But he got that piece of stainless back. Remember, it had that ding right there. And, boy, you'd never know now. Dan at Finishing Touch did a beautiful job on it. So, sometimes you do have to know when to take it to somebody. Because the chances of him ever getting another one of those if he damaged it, pretty low. I can't imagine there's a lot of 66 wagon trim out there. Not for the Catalina wagon. So, we'll keep going. Just slowly pulling things apart. Here's the front seats they're definitely going to need a little bit of work you can see the foams are coming apart back seats up there starting to stack things on the shelf uh, you can really see just how bad the seat foams are when you look under them and see all the crumbs just trying to figure out how on earth this contraption was mounted i got two screws out just trying to trying to figure it out you know, I've got some wiggle now, but it definitely doesn't want to come off, so it's mounted back there somewhere. I just haven't found it yet. So, just went and grabbed a mirror and said, oh, I haven't shot a video in a while. So, here I am shooting a little bit of video, but I'd like to get all of this out. I think that'll just be, you know, all those gauged things will be sitting down once I can get the console out of here. Just kind of looking to see what I'm dealing with here i want to make sure there's no hidden secrets that really demand a lot more of our attention that we're not paying attention to i don't know that i'll get to having the dash pad off today but we're working towards that direction like i said anything i can pull out now will help me make decisions later if you've never taken a first gen console out this can be quite intimidating there's a few screws from the front from beneath that are very hard to get at which is why the little bent screwdriver that go up. In fact, if, if you've got an older car, it, they might not even be there. You can see where they attach there from underneath. They're always fun to get at, but when there's a lot of gauges and wires, it makes it even more fun to get at. 
So we're slowly getting the console out. And it was, uh, so besides the two screws that were inside of that crazy metal plate, they had adhesive down. And that was the thing I was a little concerned about. But So there's that silly thing. That's not going back in this car. Um, I get what they were trying to do. I don't know what it's for. I found a little module under here. I don't know what that is, but I bet it has something to do with that antenna. So I will be asking some questions at some point. But now I'm just going to take those two screws off of the mounting plate and then the console will slide out once I unhook the wiring bundle and I will be very careful. There's a lot of stuff going on here, including holes through the boot. I think a new boot is definitely on call for this application. Let's keep uh let's keep everything sealed. All right, we're wrapping up for the day. It's getting dark out, although you know it's dark at noon anymore, you know, it's Minnesota. But uh got a bit out. I've got a giant mess under there to go through. Because if anything's salvageable, we better better pull it out of there. But I think most of that is garbage. So we're going to just keep pulling it out. I pulled the wheel, which, boy, that did not want to come off. Somebody made a new nut for it, and it didn't want to come off of there. So we got it. You know, obviously that's going to come out of there, that giant tack sitting in the middle. Uh, still a lot to do. A lot of mess in here. Uh, I thought about vacuuming, but honestly, I'll just wrap all that garbage up with the carpet when the carpet comes out. Because, you know, let's just pull some seat belts and some sill plates and all the carpet can come out of this car. Because I'll just pull it from under those two kick panels. I'll deal with those later. Those are never, ever, ever fun. <laughs> never, never, never. And then, uh, obviously, you know, it's a manual top. You can tell there's no pump there. If it was a power top, there'd be a pump there. So, no, just a, a lot of cleanup to do, a lot going on here. Not overly impressed with this whole setup, but we'll, we'll work with that. We'll, we'll deal with what we've got. Um, these will stay down so that uh, when Pixie gets a chance, she can kind of look and see what's salvageable and what isn't. And you can see we're starting to fill up his shelf up there already. It's uh, starting to get a little bit up there. So that's going to be the end for Bent 69 today. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving.